Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to get more out of the Apple calendar. If you're like me, if you use devices in the Apple ecosystem like the iPhone, the iPad or the Mac, then the Apple calendar is a great way to manage your time and plan what you're doing. It's the standard default calendar that comes on your device. It's probably not as powerful as other calendars like Google Calendar, which is probably the most popular calendar around. There are also some good third-party options like Fantastical, which have extra features and functionality. But for me personally, I quite like the Apple Calendar. I think it achieves a really nice balance between being actually quite powerful, but also nice and simple. I also like that I don't have to download any extra apps or sign up to subscriptions. And if you work in the Apple ecosystem, if you use multiple Apple devices, especially if you have CarPlay, which I'll be showing you later in this video, then I find the Apple Calendar just works really nicely across your different devices. Don't forget, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. So let's take a look at the Apple Calendar. Here I am, I have the Calendar app open on my Mac. Now, the first thing I want to just show you actually is that you can use the calendar in the light mode like this, or if I go to my Mac's system preferences and then general, I can enable dark mode. This is actually just more of a Mac OS feature, but obviously it applies to the calendar. I quite like actually using my calendar in dark mode like this. It just kind of is the, the, the look and feel that I prefer. Now, when you're setting up your Apple calendar, the first thing you can do is you can add multiple accounts. So you can see up here, and actually if I go to my calendars settings, if I go to the accounts tab, you can see I have two accounts, the iCloud and my Google work account connected. And we can see those two here on the sidebar. This means that I can use the Apple Calendar for multiple kind of areas of my life in a way. So personally, I have an iCloud account for all of the personal appointments and events that I'm attending. And then I have a work account, which is actually a Google Workspace account. And this is why I manage all of my work, you know, work-based appointments and, and tasks that I'm working on that I want to put on my calendar. And so if you want, you can connect a new account here, uh, either an iCloud, Microsoft Exchange, Google, Yahoo, AOL, or any other CalDAV supported account. You would simply uh, choose the account type and then follow the steps to connect your account. You will notice some options in terms of how often the account is refreshed. So with my iCloud account, I have new uh, calendar events being pushed to this calendar. What that means is if I create a calendar appointment on my phone, it will get pushed to my calendar on my Mac and show up usually pretty quickly. Whereas with Google Workspace, uh, I can have the calendar refresh every uh, 15 minutes, every five minutes. Actually, I might change this to every minute, why not? And so the calendar is gonna check my Google account every minute for new appointments. Once you have your different calendar accounts connected, as you can see, you can set up multiple calendars. And this is where the terminology in the calendar world gets a bit confusing. I mean, I'm looking at this and I consider this interface, this is my calendar, but each of these categories up here are technically called calendars. And I can create a new calendar. If I go file new calendar or option command N, I can create a new category like this. So I could call this, uh, I don't know, hobbies. Um, I can I can customize this if I go get info. I can uh, put a description in here. I can change the color of this calendar uh, and that type of thing. And so that's the first tip that I have here is to set up multiple categories. I'm gonna call them categories, but they're actually referred to as calendars for the different areas of your life or work that you need to manage. So I have this purple one where I block out uh, social appointments. I have a sport calendar, which you can see here for things like going to the gym. I have a family calendar, and this is actually shared with my wife. So these purple appointments here, uh, I can add appointments to this family calendar, so can my wife, and they will show up both on my wife's devices and mine as well. So this is a really great way that we can put in things that we're both, uh, the things that we're both attending that we both need to be aware of. And then I just have this random calendar for kind of a catch all things that I need to do. I've got in here meditating in the morning. I do some Wim Hof breathing in the afternoon. It's just kind of like stuff, stuff that I need to do really. I've blocked out time for going for a walk and taking lunch in the middle of the day. And then on my work calendar, I have the green appointments. So any any appointment that, or meeting that somebody books with me, that gets scheduled in the green appointments calendar. 
The blue work calendar I actually use for planning tasks and work that I need to do. I'm a big proponent of time blocking and I'll link up here a video that I created all about how I apply time blocking to plan out the work that I do. But this is where I actually schedule time for the, for the things that I need to do. I also have my CRM pipe drive connected to my Google Calendar. So if I schedule an activity in my CRM, I can have that appear on my calendar. And because I use Calendly to book appointments, sometimes I don't want to be booked. And so I can block out time uh, and I'll use this busy calendar to block out time where I actually don't want to be booked for a call. So if you are still quite new to Apple Calendar, or if you're still using it in quite a basic way with just the default calendar categories, I'd recommend setting up some additional categories so that you can organize more of the different types of things that you need to do and for sharing with friends and family. Now, there are a few different ways you can choose to view your calendar. At the top here, we have the day view, so I can see what's happening on a particular day. And uh, if I click on an event, it shows me all of the event details on the right hand side. I can see people attending uh, the meeting and that type of thing. There is the week view, which is my preferred view because it means I can see a lot of information at once. And also because we generally tend to be planning in advance. You know, we're planning what's coming up in the next few days or next week. And so in this week view, I can, I can jump ahead multiple weeks uh, and see a lot of information. The month view, obviously I can see an entire month, but I find that you, this view is really lacking in detail. I can still click on and, and see individual appointments, but um, it's, it's really not great for seeing, you know, what am I doing today, tomorrow, this week? It's, it's not, it doesn't have as much detail as the week view. And then there is a year view where you can see what appointments, you know, kind of how much you have scheduled for different days. So the red days are days with a lot of appointments scheduled. Um, but personally, I don't really use this view ever. Almost all the time I'm, I'm on this, uh, this weekly view. So let's go ahead and create a new calendar event and I'll talk you through all the different features and options available. Let's say I want to schedule a dinner with a friend th uh, this evening. There's a couple of ways I could do this. The first is that I can click this plus button and I could say dinner with John at 7 p.m. And Apple Calendar is going to interpret what I type into that uh, quick ad box. And you can see it's added dinner with John tonight at 7 p.m. It's going to put this into my default calendar, which is actually my work calendar. But I can change this from my settings if I want my default calendar to be one of these other ones. So that's one way that you can do it. Personally, whenever I'm creating a new calendar appointment, and this is one of the benefits of working in the week view, is that I will actually just click and drag with my mouse. So I can set the duration and the time just by clicking and dragging. And then I'll type my uh, event name. So dinner with John, this would be a social appointment. Now my biggest tip for getting more out of the Apple Calendar is to put in location details, which could either be uh, a meeting link. If you're doing a video conference, you could put in a Zoom or a Google Meet link. Or if you're meeting in person, put in the street address of the location where you're meeting. So if I start typing a street address or the name of a business location, let's try Fabric, uh, you can see here's a location that I've used recently. I can choose this uh, Fabric Cafe Bistro option, and now it's added the location to this appointment. And you'll notice when I do that, it puts this little map into the calendar appointment. And this is really useful because I can click this, I can bring up Apple Maps and I can see where it is that I'm going and I can find directions and things. The other really useful benefit of this is that I can get an alert here uh, when it's time to leave. So based on my current location and uh, the location of this appointment where I'm actually going, the Apple Calendar is going to alert me on my different Apple devices, whether it's my watch, my iPhone, my iPad, my Mac, it's going to actually tell me, hey, based on the traffic, it's time to leave. And so this is something I make sure I always do. If there's somewhere I'm going, I will put the location into the calendar appointment so that I get that alert because sometimes there might be traffic and I want to know uh, if I need to leave earlier to, to, to compensate for that. So not only can I uh, be alerted when it's time to leave, I could actually add travel time to the appointment here. So it's actually suggesting if I were to drive, it's gonna take 13 minutes to get there from Functional Strength CrossFit. Now, why is it using that destination? Well, because I have this um, gym appointment here, I'm at Functional, uh, at this CrossFit class, the calendar is assuming you're probably in this location. 
So based on the location of this previous event, your travel time would be 13 minutes. If that's not accurate, maybe in this case, I've actually gone home first, so I'm actually leaving from home, I can use a, a custom, I can put in a custom travel time. So I can say, this is gonna take me 15 minutes to get there. And so once I apply that, you can see the Apple Calendar adds this little buffer time before the appointment. So this, it's just a nice visual way of seeing when do I need to leave to compensate for that travel time. The other benefit of putting your location data into your calendar appointment is when you get into your car, the location from your calendar event actually appears as a suggested destination. So I can now select this, it takes me to my Apple map. You can actually see my calendar event right here, lunch with John. I can click on that and I can start my navigation. Now, obviously in this case, I know where I'm going. I'm not really using the map to find where to go, but sometimes you're going somewhere, there are multiple potential routes you could take to get there. And especially if you might you know, run into traffic on the way, having the map is quite useful to find the best way to get there. Now, because this is an appointment with a friend, I could, if I wanted to, I could send an invite. So I could say john at example.com. I can send a, an invite to John's email address, and then I'm gonna click send here. That's gonna send an invite to John, and you'll notice this little person icon down here. There's actually a question mark by his uh, that icon at the moment, because John hasn't confirmed if he's attending. And you'll see that icon on any event where there is an invitee. So for this review clients coming up on Friday, I can see that little person icon and there's a tick next to it. This tells me that Warwick, in this case, he's confirmed attendance, he's going to be attending this, this meeting. And finally, down the bottom here, you can add notes to the calendar event, you can add URLs and even attachments from your computer. So one of the ways to use this, maybe you've scheduled a meeting, you could actually put your meeting agenda meeting agenda goes here so that when we're in the meeting, I pull up the calendar event and I've got my agenda in front of me. I could put in URLs to websites and things that are uh, related to this appointment. And I can even attach documents from my computer. So let's uh, add a uh, quick, I don't know, I'll add this photo in here. This then gets shared with all of the invitees. So when we're in the meeting, uh, we can all pull up this attachment if we need to share this document. You'll notice again, when I attach a file to a calendar event, this little paperclip icon appears. So I get these little hints as to what information is uh, attached to this appointment. Now, a couple of tips if you're working across time zones. Firstly, you can see at the top, I can see the time zone that my calendar is currently set to. And if you're not seeing this, if you go to your calendar settings, go to advanced, you can turn on time zone support here. And so at the moment, these are all of my events in New Zealand time up here. But if I'm going overseas, I'm planning a trip, I could switch this all to Eastern time, for example. And here's what times, these are the times of the events as they would be in Eastern time. Now, something I do if I'm scheduling an appointment with somebody and they are in a different time zone is I will schedule the appointment based on their local time. I find it's less confusing for them. And also I quite like seeing what the time is for them locally. So when I create an event, let's say it's a 90 minute meeting. It's going to be an appointment, uh, Paul and Tim. I'm going to put in a Zoom link here because we're meeting via Zoom. And then if I click the date and time options here, it's defaulted to my local time, New Zealand time, but I could change this to, let's say, Pacific time. Now, because 6 p.m. Pacific on Thursday, that would actually be 1 p.m. Uh, my time. So it's actually moved the calendar appointment. Um, so I'm actually gonna move it back because my local time, this appointment is starting, let's just say, at 6 p.m. So I can see that here in the calendar details. 6 p.m. Thursday, for me, is the equivalent of 11 p.m. Uh, and we can see here 11 p.m. on the 7th based on Pacific time. So I can see it's 11 at night to 12.30 in the morning. So very late appointment in this case, but you get the idea. And that is the equivalent to 6 p.m. for me. And so I can see both my time and their local time in this appointment. I'm also going to set an alert. So five minutes before the meeting, uh, I do this with every single meeting that I have, especially if I'm meeting on Zoom. I'll get an alert five minutes before, so I get a little notification flying into my screen telling me, hey, you have a meeting, it's starting in five minutes. 
On the topic of alerts, if you go to your calendar settings and go to the alerts tab, you can actually set up default alert times for different types of appointment. So if I go to my iCloud account, I can have different alerts for my iCloud and my Google accounts. In this case, I can say all events can have an alert at the time of the event or five minutes before, or maybe just all day appointments. If I have an all day appointment at the top like this, I can have an alert just for those all day appointments. Or the one that I like to set up is to get an alert about somebody's birthday on that particular day. And this is what I mean when I say the Apple Calendar works so well in the Apple ecosystem. So because I use the Apple Contacts on my phone and Mac, here's an example, this is my wife, I can see her birthday on the 4th of January. And so when I come to my calendar, I'm just gonna make sure in my settings that I have the show birthdays calendar turned on. And so now I'll see that here in the sidebar, I can see the, ca the birthdays of the contacts in my uh, address book. And so obviously I'm not gonna forget my wife's birthday, but I'm not very good at remembering everyone's birthday. So for other friends and family, I find this really useful. Another tip to help you get more out of the Apple Calendar is to set up appointments as recurring for things that you do again and again. And this just makes um, planning your time a lot easier because a lot of your time is already planned. So if I can actually jump forward in time like this, if I keep jumping weeks ahead, you'll see this email appointment just appears on my calendar each week. And this is because I have this set to repeat every week on Tuesday, Wednesday, I actually have slightly different recurring appointments for different days, but you know, this one on Monday, it's 90 minutes every week. This one on Tuesday, seven to uh, 8.30, this again repeats, uh, where, where is it? Every week. And so this means I don't have to manually add it to my calendar every week. Every week I've just got that block of time scheduled for email. You can see I'm doing the same here with my walk and lunch, meditating in the morning. I really do take this approach with my calendar where if there's something I need to do, I put it on my calendar, even for things like hobbies and um, habits like meditation. I find that if I put it on my calendar, I'm more likely to do it. So I like to set these types of things up to repeat. So there we go. That is a little look at the Apple Calendar. As you can see, there's quite a lot of uh, power and functionality under the hood once you start digging into it. And again, if you're like me, if you have a few Apple devices and you don't want to have to download an extra app or sign up for a subscription, the Apple Calendar is a great option. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.